I'm Mark Rutten, welcome back to Nomad Boat Building, and today on the 2.4 meter project we are going to make carlins. So let me explain what those are. We're going to look at this little model here to try and uh, talk about deck structure of a boat. So in any boat we have some form of deck structure that usually comprises longitudinal members that run from stem to stern that we are calling shear clamps in our case. And spanning those are deck beams. So that's giving you longitudinal strength and it's giving you strength across the beam of the boat. It's giving us something that, to support the decking. Now anytime you want to penetrate that deck, penetrate that deck structure, we need to provide some additional framework. And that framework we refer to as carlins. So if you want to put a house on here or put a cockpit on here, we need something else that runs fore and aft that creates that opening between the deck beams. Those are carlins. Now, in the last video, we learned about carlin joints. And the purpose of those joints is really to connect deck beams to carlins and carlins to deck beams. Because the carlins are not much different than the deck beams. They're usually just a little bit heavier, but they're fairly similar in proportion. And the carlin joint is just a very elegant way to create that butt joint, to take a fastener that's for the most part hidden, and take the loads and strains and all the rest that it needs to take in order to provide a good long-lasting structure. Now we use the carlin joint to connect our deck beams to our shear clamps in our case because we're building a slightly different style of boat and uh, we can get away with sort of mixing things up a little bit if you will. That's the, sort of the simple answer. Now in this boat we are not creating a normal shaped cockpit opening. Our customer has requested one that's like teardrop shaped, kind of like a kayak combing. So we're going to be making teardrop shaped carlins and fitting those to the boat today. So sit back and relax. Let me do all the work. I already figured out my cockpit combing in general terms uh, on the uh, boat itself. But now I need to make sure that the idea I had is actually going to work with the rules. And the rules of this particular sailing class stipulate that my cockpit opening cannot be any greater than 0.7 of a meter. So my initial calculations worked out okay, but then up here on the lofting board, we're trying to make sure that they were actually on the money in terms of that dimension. So I worked out the shape that I had figured I liked. Problem was, it came in at about 0.733. So I'm laying out the shape that I had previously created. And we had a thought, my customer and I, that if we just flatten out the sort of the amount of taper we have up forward here, we, might, we can save ourselves a bit of space. So right here, this is my original line. We're going to try just sucking it in a little bit and see if we can make it look good. So I'm just using a stiffer batten to help manipulate that shape more fairly because bundle battens are great for these tight turn curves, but they're not so good for the long straight ones. So I just double it up with a with a straighter batten to sort of fair that out. So for this distance, I'm sucking it in approximately an inch. So what I'll do is I'll calculate exactly how much space is in this area. It's not much, you know? That's what, like three feet? Three and a half feet? by about an inch deep. 
could be more than you think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, nineteen hundred. 46. And we have 300, 600, 900, 1200, 1478, 1478, and 1946. Okay, drew out my cockpit and I crunched my numbers again and it seems like I'm okay with my first one. I was a little more accurate or I was a lot more accurate on my number crunching this time around. And uh, it looks like I'm good to go with my first cockpit. And it gets me to 0.69 and some change of a square meter. So I'm going to go with that. So right now I'm just making a mylar pattern and from this I'm going to make a mold and from the mold I'm going to laminate what's called the carlins. Carlins are the structural members that make up a cockpit opening. So I'm just going to throw a little bit more information on here than I absolutely need for the immediate needs. That's just for future reference if I ever want to build this boat again. You know, the more that these drawings and patterns can tell me the, an accurate story, the better. And if anybody challenges my calculations, I can always pull these out and say, well, here you go. This is what I made this cockpit opening with. Go ahead and measure it up. All's good it should be accurate. Okay, and I'm just recreating my same cockpit pattern here on this piece of MDF. And I'm going to double this up to make my, my mold. I could get away with just a single layer, however, um, I want to put a little bit of shear into it because it does rise up towards the, the cockpit uh, ends and so uh, if I can try and build that shear into my uh, car lens that would be good. And at the very t stern here where it's taking a, a tighter bend we're just going to spring this in a little tiny bit. This is maybe, I don't know, a quarter inch or something like that at most just because I know there's going to be some spring back there. Up at the bow, it's not a lot of shape, so I don't worry about the spring back there. All right, that looks pretty good. And I think what I'm also going to do is I'm going to describe my um, my clamp clamping area here because I'm going to cut this out and use the scraps to double this up. So while the batten's still on, is a good time to do that. I'm just going to decide how deep I want to make it. If there's a particular size clamp you like to use, well, consider how much uh, space you're going to need for it. So if we go like this, you know, my clamp would be there. I can get away with a uh, mold at least that thick. I don't think I'm going to bother. I'll go about four inches. I think is probably plenty. So we got here. That's three and a quarter inches. Yeah, that'll probably be fine. So we'll just use this as a to help draw that in, inside shape. There we go. And you want to run past your center line, of course, because we'll probably have a little bit of scarfing material, scarfing room, and there's the tail end of your laminations are never perfect. And I think I might even add on a little piece here at both ends because I'm probably a little bit shy, especially here where it runs out. I should close up, square off this end so you can get a clamp on the very end here.
Okay, here's my mold, and uh, really simple, you know, you just cut this out about three inches deep or so, three and a half inches, and then I just uh, use scrap to add extra pieces onto the back side of it, glued and nailed them all together, and what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to use my router with a flush trim bit to uh, flush up the added on portions to the primary template here, so we'll just flip it over. So I got a bearing on the bottom on this one. Clamp it down and we'll just trim away all that extra material. It's going to work out just fine. Okay. All right, here's my dry run for this glue up. I've got this billet of Sitka spruce that I've cut up. These are eighth inch laminations. And my typical system for dealing with laminations like this is I always drill a hole at one end of the billet and put a fastener through there. This is just a finishing nail. And that's just to help kind of lock them all together and keep them oriented. It's really easy for this to just become a big snaky, slimy mess when you start uh, gluing it up. And you really need to anchor your first point down and have these strips not start sliding one direction or another. So that works really well for me. And the reason I'm not showing you the actual glue up here is because it's actually really boring to watch. It takes a, quite a bit of time and um, it, I never really get good footage out of it. So uh, we'll just sort of go with what you're seeing here. Um, so anyway, it, this is all bending into shape really nicely. This just snakes around there. It's a little tight right around this turn, but not too tight. I think I got just about the right amount. And I did a test drive with my Sitka spruce strips before to make sure that I was picking ones that had the, you know, that were thin enough to actually make the bend, yet still thick enough that they would bend fairly. So this seems to be a good limit given that how tight this turn is. And one thing I'm doing is I'm going to laminate a little bit of the deck camber into this right off the bat. So basically I've got about 5 eighths of an inch of crown that's being built into it. So down here at the center line, it's touching the table, but up here at the extreme beam, it's about 5 eighths elevated. And that's roughly the deck camber that we're working with at the center of the boat. So. It's not 100%, but it's better than I would have if I just bent it straight. I'd be, all, best I could do is force sort of a, a direct angle up onto it, and I would be missing out on the fact that the deck actually has a bit of a sweep this way. So this is about the best I think I can do. And it seems to be working out okay. Of course, bending some a billet like this on edge is difficult to do. It doesn't want to do it. It wants to collapse over to one side or the other, which is what makes it stiff in the finished product, so getting it to bend this way was a little bit of a, of a game of clamping it different ways at different times until I got it sort of all snugged up, but it seems to have worked out okay. So what I'm going to do is um, do this first glue up, and then once it's done, I'll pop this off of the mold, we'll flip the mold over, and do the second glue up in the opposite direction so that we get a matched set. So I'm really happy with how this is going so far. It's going quickly, and that's always great. All right, now we'll be back after this is glued up. Okay, well here's our glue up, and you can see we're using considerably more clamps than in our dry run.
Okay, so we are the next day and this is all glued up. I'm very curious to see how this turned out. So we'll start breaking down the glue up here. I want to be careful to just mark my mold where I've got my blocking here that is controlling my heights because I'd like to be able to repeat those on the other side, when I flip this over, I want to try and mimic this exactly. So I need to be careful about making sure that this blocking I've set up is available when I flip it over to put it in the same spot. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't usually use my quick grips for these glue ups uh, like this and laminations. They tend to go with, you know, F body clamps, but I don't have a ton of F body clamps that are small and this is kind of a light glue up and I didn't use a backing band which maybe is a mistake um, but the idea behind using uh, a backing band is it helps to spread out the, the tension on, the, on your lamination and uh, you get away with fewer clamps. I just I didn't do that a little bit out of laziness, I suppose, and maybe not having a band exactly the right size. But um, it just means you got to use more, a lot more clamps. Which isn't really a big deal, but it is a thing. Just got to find places to put all of these as I prepare for the next glue up. I don't want to dump them all over the table because then they're all in your way, right? Anticipated, uh, yeah, okay, that's about right. Worried about how much spring back I accounted for it. That's perfect. That's exactly the amount that I cut back the mold. So, uh, up forward, I didn't account for it because I knew this is such a slight, shallow bend, it's not going to make any difference anyway. But that worked out really nicely. Beautiful. Beautiful. Wow. <laughs> now I put the shape into it, but you know, to be honest, you, can, you can't hardly tell that I did it at all. Um, it almost makes me wonder if I totally wasted my time doing that. I look at the ends, it feels like they're both sitting in the same plane. Hmm. That might have been a complete waste of time. I'll do the opposite of the other one just the same, but uh, you know, it's, it's honestly hard to tell. So let me see, what did I do now? Um, okay, so this is, just got to mark what is my vertical face. 
before I go anywhere. Okay, I've got some other marks to throw on here. Should have done that before I popped it off the mold. So we've got center line. Station lines. Another center line. Okay. Okay, I'm not going to screw up this time. I, last time I forgot to mark my stations before I took this off the mold, and so this time I'm smartening up and making sure they end up on there. Again, spring back, it's just about perfect. Over here we have a slight problem. This is where I had some blocking on here. I had this piece of plastic to try and force this lamination together this way. Well, remember I said I didn't use a backing band? Well, you can see I didn't have a clamp right here. And you can see how those laminations are just spread out just a little bit in this spot, like a little hump. It's not gonna be problematic for my finished product because it's fair on the inside. That's the face that's important to me. But this is a great example of why you need to use a lot of clamps with thin laminations or you need to use a backing band. And I really should have taken the time to get a backing band happening. I didn't do that, now I got this. Luckily I don't really have to deal with that in any particular way in this particular project, so I lucked out. Still, it's better when those, that kind of thing doesn't happen. Okay, this part is all super satisfying. This last little crack as you bust this off the mold. Love it. Just a couple little parts that are still stuck there, some blocking. That's great. And I got a little fracture in one of my laminations here. That's odd. I don't know why that is. It won't be a problem, but i um, kind of curious that it's there. But um, it looks really good. I'm super happy we got this little part of the project out of the way. It's time to fit my carlins. These are pretty straightforward and I'm going to use really simple joinery for this. We're just going to go with uh, simple butt joints. I mean, I could make it more complicated, but I don't see a lot of point. I mean, this is going to have a glued deck onto it. And I don't want to take up a bunch of time playing around with this if I don't have to. I'm just aligning this to the center lines that I have. Okay, that's good. And that's good. I mean, it'd be nice to use like a Carlin notch up here, but honestly, I, I don't see it helping a whole lot. Um, there's going to be a bunch of structure all around this tying it all together, so I think I'm going to keep it simple. At best, I might try and squeeze a screw in or some extra blocking to just make this a stronger glue joint, because as it stands, this is a bit of a, I mean, this is mostly ingrain, so that's not great. And uh, it's really relying on the glued on deck to really give it the strength that it needs. So I'm just going to scribe underneath here. And same thing back here. Just trace a line underneath. 
And um, it's probably pretty important that I give myself a sort of a, a mark indicating where my termination point is over here. You need a registration mark, right? So, mine is, I've got one from the other side. I've already marked and cut the other side. We'll cut the back end on the bandsaw, and this end I think we'll probably just cut it um, by hand. I don't see a lot of point in playing around with a power tool on this long whippy thing for that. Okay, that looks good. I'm almost tempted to cut this the same way, actually, because the bandsaw blade at the moment is pretty um, played out. Let's see. Let's see if I want to do that. Nah. Nah, it's too long a cut. It's not going to go as smoothly as I would like. Fans saw it is. Okay, there's my Carlin's cut. Now I need to get them sort of fixed into place before gluing. So I'm just going to just tack this in, in there for a second. I put a piece of plastic over here to support this floating end. The other end I can clamp easily. So I've got both sides here ready to go. Pop them both up there. I'm not properly fixed in the exact position I want just yet. This is just sort of a starting spot for the moment while I get it all set up. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is just figure out how I'm going to clamp it in place and then uh, we'll worry about getting glue onto it and fastening and all that sort of stuff. I'm going to use our um, longboard, our deck beam or deck camber longboard to help glue this or at least support this. So what I'm doing is I'm just um, I'm going to position it roughly midships here and I'm raising it up just a hair to allow for fairing because I want to be able to take a little meat off the tops of these um, because the attitude of them is not quite in line with our deck camber just yet. So to facilitate that we need to just make sure they're just sitting just a hair high and so the tongue depressors are going to raise this up just a like a sixteenth of an inch which is about perfect. So I think I'm just going to use Got one of my spur beams here. I'll use one of my spur beams. I'm going to use one of my off cuts to help support this. So I'll just sandwich that there. And that's going to allow a little bit of wiggle room for these guys. I can probably even clamp it right at the shear. You know, I'll worry about securing it there later on. Okay, so I guess the question is, can I, what do I need to do, can I, yeah, I can spring that up, I have to get glue on it there, that'll work, that'll work nicely. Now 
over here. I'm just a little, it's like I'm a hair shy on this one for some reason. It's just like the spring of the, of the carlin is such that it wants to hang back. Clamp those there. Yep, that'll work. It's one of these um, frustrating bits of the project where I can do this tiny little bit and then I gotta kind of walk away because it's in the state of being glued. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna dry fit this for the moment. Be nice, this joint isn't quite what I would like it to be, but it'll fill with epoxy and I'd rather not shave it down for the sake of fitting. So that looks pretty good. Just gonna check a few measurements here. Need to make sure that we are um, that we're going to have a hundred millimeters of uh, deck area at its narrowest point, and that's part of the rules. So I'm just checking here at this deck beam location, the narrowest one, to make sure it's going to fit. Compare it to the other side. Hmm. And that's better. So what I'm doing is I'm just tweaking this inboard a little bit. I mean, these are supposed to be identical, but there's every chance they're, they've sort of changed shape a little bit after they've been off the mold for a while. These things do happen. So that looks pretty good. I'm gonna give myself a registration mark for gluing. I think that looks pretty good. It looks right, it is right. All right, Jimmy. That's it for today, folks. Now, thank you so much for watching, and I want to thank all of you who helped support these videos over on Patreon. If you'd like to join us there, there's a link in the corner or down in the description. I will see you all next time. Ciao for now.